All right. As rookie drafts are starting to fade into the distance, I am beginning to gather my 2022 rankings. You know, the pure, simple, raw, unadultered 2022 season long rankings for fantasy football. It's a shit show out there right now. As I'm putting them together, however, I'm starting to see some massive openings in value, some players that I just cannot imagine passing up on where they're currently getting drafted. So today's video is going to be a very early look at six must-draft players in fantasy football, running back and quarterback edition. Tomorrow's video, so make sure you subscribe if you enjoyed, will be the pass-catching edition. Wide receivers and tight ends, six more, maybe eight more, maybe ten more. I saw the list, and there's so many fucking juicy areas to take a bite out of. So tomorrow's will be pass-catchers, six, eight, ten must-draft players at those positions. Very early look. Based on the initial rankings, y'all know what to do. Tuck your shirts in. Stop yelling and let Ike eat lunch. So all of our in-season packages, as well as rookie packages and sheesh like that, all the products that we have going on right now are available on bdge.co, okay? bdge.co will be linked down below. That's where my season-long rankings will be available to you. all If you're drafting in best ball draft, et cetera, you need the rankings. Now you can go get them on bdge.co. The easiest, best, and least pricey, most discounted way to get them is by going to prizepicks.com. You sign up on Prize Picks. Use the promo code BDGE when you deposit $10 or more. All the packages on our site right now are more than $10, right? So this is going to save you a lot of money. You get the $10 to play with, plus a 100% deposit match bonus on prize picks, meaning you get to play with 20. If you put down 20, you play with 40. There are over-unders on all these players' props for their season-long yardage, which we might touch on today. I forget whether or not they're in the video, to be completely quite frank with you. PrizePicks.com. Use the promo code BDG when you deposit 10 bucks. You will get an email from us the next day giving you access to what we have on the website at the moment. Season-long rankings will be up within the next week or so. Let's start off with the running backs and my favorite player on this list. This is going to be a brand guy this year because I know Noah loves him. I'm not even going to use his analysis for this. We're going to try to get this into a nice, crisp, short video for y'all. But that's Travis Etienne. ADP right now, running back 23, so a back end running back two with clear, clear, in my eyes, in my humble-ass opinion, RB1 fantasy upside, 64th overall in Superflex leagues, according to Sleeper ADP. If we were concerned about the injury, you should no longer be, all right? He's been fully cleared for OTAs. He'll be full go for training camp. He's coming off this Liz Frank injury that happened last summer so he's had plenty of time to heal 12 months to heal 12 months plus to heal i'm not worried about it conversely you should be worried about james robinson injury towards achilles in week 14 that is a 10 to 12 month return timetable yes cam makers cam makers cam makers cam makers y'all are a fucking owl with the cam makers bullshit over and over and over again that's one player out of the his history of achilles tears that has come back and he did not come come back successfully okay we don't want to admit it but cam Akers was terrible when he came back last year yes he had like one or two big catches down the sideline all in all as a runner he was not good i would be shocked if we saw james robinson on the field for the jaguars before like week 10 of this year probably later okay i i think i might even be surprised if he plays this year at all regardless i'm not worried about james robinson which means there is zero competition for mr travis Etienne. okay and plenty of plenty of running backs have come back from Liz Frank injuries uh, and been successful. Plenty of athletes across all different sports, right? Go look, go look it up in a fucking book. Go read the dictionary. And let's not forget how good ETN was as a prospect. 5'10", 215 pounds, 4'5", 040. You're talking about a 215-pound back, 4'5", speed, really, really, really strong pass-catching history in college. And now he gets to play again with that college quarterback who allowed him to catch 48 passes his senior year before coming out. 48 passes is an enormous amount for a college running back, all right? ETN's going to catch a ton of balls in this Jaguars offense. It's going to be playing from behind a lot this year, all right? So ETN has legit three-down size, skill, goal line ability, and receiving work upside that you're getting in the middle rounds. Number two on this list, Aaron Jones. Current ADP of running back 15, 43rd overall in Superflex, and that's what gets me. You get him in the fourth round. The fade has gone too far. Even for me, I made a video earlier on this offseason that Aaron Jones was an easy sell for me in Dynasty, and I still stick by that. However, for season long, 
I want Aaron Jones this year. All right. Again, the fade has gone too far with AJ Dillon coming up and creeping up into his workload. That is going to happen this year. He is going to get a lot of work on the ground. But here's the point. All right. Devontae Adams is gone, which means a lot of the play calling on the goal line for this Packers offense is going to be converted to short dump offs to the running backs at the line of scrimmage or just rush plays. Okay. So we're going to see a big swing in those 37 touchdown passes from Aaron Rodgers move back to the running backs, which is something that we saw Aaron Jones be really successful in the beginning part of his uh, career. But I'm not even making the argument for his goal line work or his groundwork in general, right? The big, the big fucking key takeaway here, Jones will be lined up as a receiver, at like an unbelievable amount here in 2022 okay he's going to catch more passes in 2022 than he has in any year of his career by far and that's where his fantasy value is going to come from if you look at the splits between games where Devonte adams played and where he didn't play if you look at the right part of that chart out of split games where Devonte adams did not play aaron jones 6.7 targets per game 0.57 receiving touchdowns per game 55.4 receiving yards per game and, you know, I don't know if there's real correlation, but 0.86 rushing touchdowns compared to 0.62, the game plan goes more towards the running backs, especially down by the goal line. All right. So don't be surprised if Aaron Jones has a similar stat line to like what Austin Eckler did last year. Eckler finishes the RB2 in fantasy last year. The dude ran for just over 900 yards, but he caught 70 balls, went for 650 through the air, eight touchdowns in the receiving games. That That's absolutely not out of the question for Aaron Jones this year. It's going to have a huge impact in the passing game that now has... No true number one lined up outside, lined up in the middle. If you look at Aaron Jones's career progression year over year, you know, we, we wiped out. I hate doing like rookie number stats. So we took out 2017 as rookie year, 2018 on the left side, wide plus in line plus slot snaps, just the overall snaps that the player had either out wide in line or in the slot. And this is Aaron Jones, obviously. So 2018, 16 overall snaps that account for 4.2% of his, uh, his total snaps. The next year, 79 went up to 11.9%. The next year, 16.3%. Last year, career high, 21%, 120 of his overall snaps out wide in line or slot snaps. You're seeing the trend continue and continue and continue. I wouldn't be surprised if he's a 30 to 35% wide inline slot guy like Austin Eckler has been for most of his career. So expect that trend to continue. Expect Aaron Jones to catch 70, 80 passes this year in this offense and be a phenomenal fucking value in the fourth round of, of super flex drafts in PPR leagues. Boom. Leonard Fournette, next guy up on this list, Tampa Bay, ADP of 47th overall, running back 17. It's preposterous. Per preposterous. I don't think I've ever used that fucking word in one of my videos before, but this is a scenario in which the word needed to be used. Okay. Fournette will be given every single chance to be the workhorse again. In the, There is literally no reason not to have seen what he just did last year and then say, okay, he can handle the workload. He can catch passes. He can be good on the goal line. He's our fucking RB1. Clear cut. The offensive line was top five blocking in the league. Tom Brady, bike, Chris Godwin, hurt. Right, don't know if he's going to be on the pup list or not. They might even need to go more ground heavy. Sure, Rashad White is there, might factor in a little bit. But listen, once Fournette got the the chokehold on this workhorse backfield, like Gio Bernard was getting five six touches a game. That's my that might be what Rashad White gets. Leonard Fournette as the forty seventh pick at the end of the fourth round is some of the most insane shit I've seen. And I'm in an office with Animal, and I worked with Snacks for many years. I've seen a lot of insane things. This ADP might be. This is crazy because I've come full circle on Mr. Uh, for uh, Uncle Lenny, man. He's back part of the family again. He never really left the family, but he's bike. And I'm drafting Leonard Fournette at this ADP every fucking time because why would Tampa go in a different direction? Just makes absolutely no sense. Rookie, running back three in this year's class. My rookie rankings are also up on bdge.co. So again, make sure you go click the prize picks link down below. Just deposit 10 with promo code BDG. You'll get our rookie rankings for Dynasty. You'll get our season-long rankings when they drop and everything else that the site has to offer. Damian Pierce is my RB3 in the rookie class this year. Houston Texans draft him in the fourth round. I get it. Fourth rounder, so obviously this can go super wrong, but they've got nothing else in that backfield, man. Like they signed Marlon Mack, but Marlon Mack's also still not clearly fully recovered from that Achilles tear, and we don't know if he ever will be, right? He played a little bit last year, but... Barely got touches. We don't know what Marlon Mack is at this point in his career. Will we find out in Houston? Maybe. I imagine this is going to be a split backfield. Maybe Pierce is only getting 30% of the touches for the first month, six weeks of the season. He's going to take over by the second half, all right? He's a guy that you draft 
late in season long drafts. He's a guy that you draft in like the 12th, 13th round. Right now is ADP 157th overall, running back 46. Like that is mwah, that is primo. That is beautiful draft position to capitalize on running back value right there. He's a guy that didn't get a lot of touches at Florida. Was not a guy that you know, saw a workhorse volume, but he's built to be a workhorse, 220 pounds. And you look at his per touch efficiency, I'm talking about yards created, uh, missed tackles forced. He was literally only behind Bijan Robinson in college last year. He's a pass catcher. He was really yards per route run, uh, route, route running grades. He was like top three in the entire, co- he can do it all. All right. And he's going to surprise a lot of people that are just tuning into the rookie class and, and fantasy football overall. Cause I know we've done, we've done a lot of rookie rookie talk. And if y'all have been following our dynasty rookie analysis, we're very high on Damian Pierce. You already know about him. We've yelled about him plenty of plenty of plenty of times, but season long dudes who are coming in now, it's just getting started, reacquainted with fantasy football and whatnot. Damian Pierce, a guy you absolutely need to have your eye on. So those are four of my must draft running backs right now. Drop down below in the comment section based on the sleeper ADP. Who is someone that you, there's no chance that you're passing by based on where they're going right now. We have Aaron Jones. We have Travis Etienne. We have Leonard Fournette, and we have Damian Pierce. I could probably name like six others, but we want to keep this sheesh concise for y'all. All All right, let's move to the quarterback position. All right, first up on this list, Jalen Hurts is the quarterback eight off the board right now. Why, though? He finishes the quarterback seven last year in fantasy points per game. He led the NFL quarterbacks in rushing yards, and I get it. Lamar Jackson was hurt, but that's the type of floor he brings to your fantasy lineup. And now you add in A.J. Brown? Come on. Come on now. Show some fucking respect. Jalen Hurts was our most owned quarterback last year in underdog drafts, and he probably will be again if he's going to go off the board as a quarterback eight. No brainer floor of quarterback 10 here in Philly with weekly top three spikes and weekly or season long top five overall finish upside right now. A guy that actually is a needle mover at the quarterback position. Jalen Hurts makes no sense at quarterback eight right now when he finished as quarterback seven last year in points per game, and then you add in A.J. Brown to the offense. I don't get it. Second quarterback, you know, we don't we don't want to just take all the spicy guys and say, like, hey, you have to draft Trey Lance. Like, obviously, we like Trey Lance, et cetera, whatever. Derek Carr at quarterback 16 is really intriguing to me. He's the perfect low-key quarterback two in super flex leagues that's going to go, like, six tiers below everybody else that's like a pocket passer or these young mobile quarterbacks who are going to end up averaging around the same amount of fantasy points per game as Derek Carr, who's going to slip late. You're going to be able to get him as your quarterback two in most super flex leagues. I always say if you're not like an elite pocket passer, if you are not pinpoint like Aaron Rodgers, et cetera, you're probably only going to be as good in fantasy as your supporting cast. And good Lord, does Derek Carr have a very fucking good supporting cast. Last year, most people don't know this. He didn't really rank that highly in fantasy, but on the raw numbers, when you're looking at shit, just statistics, he was top five in completions, top five in pass attempts, and top five in passing yards. Here's a tweet I just threw out this morning, so make sure you're following me, at Nick Ercolano. Derek Carr threw for 4,804 passing yards last year, fifth most passing yards in the NFL. He only threw 23 touchdowns. If you look at every other quarterback that finished inside the top 10 for passing yards, every one of them besides Carr threw at least 33 passing touchdowns. Now you take Devontae Adams, the best end zone weapon in the NFL, and put him into Derek Carr's offense with Hunter Renfro, with Darren Waller. Carr at quarterback 16 and Aaron Rodgers at quarterback 9. Their touchdown numbers, Rodgers is at 37, Carr is at 23. If you subtract 7, add 7, they're going to be at 30. Their ADPs should meet halfway around quarterback 12, 13, borderline QB1 numbers, if not swap. I wouldn't be surprised if Derek Carr came out, threw for the same amount of passing yards, but went for 33, 35 passing touchdowns. That's an easy QB1 in fantasy. All right, so he's the second guy up on this list, and that rounds out the six must-draft players for 2022 fantasy football as I'm looking at my very, very early rankings, which should be up on the site within the next week or so. So make sure you go sign up on prize picks. Use promo code BDG when you deposit $10 or more. They're going to match that in your account, so you get to bet on a whole lot of gang shit with all the new money that you got, and you're getting access to our site, bdge.co. I love y'all. Tomorrow's video will be the must draft wide receivers and tight ends subscribe to the channel. If you want to check that out, if you're listening via podcast, thank you. I love y'all leave a rating and review hit the button. That looks like this and I'll see you tomorrow.